What's up, Kate? How are you doing today? I'm good, Drew. How are you? I'm doing great, man. I uh, had a nice weekend, just was able to kind of relax and hang out. And uh, I was able to go on a bit of a staycation with Danny. So it was it was nice. I went to the Westward Look and it was an absolutely gorgeous hotel. So shout out to the Westward Look. If you haven't gotten to stay there, you really should because it is so awesome. So nice. How was Holy your crap? Is that in Oro Valley? Yeah, it's on Ina and it's right before Ina and Oracle. And it's a, uh, you stay in like these kind of apartment-ish style buildings and you're in like a more of like a studio apartment. Um, but it's a nice resort, relaxing. And I saw the one and only Chad Casper there. He was staying as well at the exact same what? time. Yeah. So it was Dude, good. That's, it was a lot of fun. that's actually, I'm pretty sure that's the hotel that, um, cause Kai and I booked our wedding venue Ooh. and like for the venue that we booked it's right near there and they give you a free night stay the night of the wedding at westward look i'm oh, pretty sure that's it it's so gorgeous you're absolutely gonna love it danny and i had a blast it was that's so crazy. nice there was a pool a jacuzzi right outside of our room like literally i could throw a rock and hit it it was freaking awesome and it's right next to all of the amenities on ina and oracle like you've got that new restaurant just open mm -hmm. Yeah, cheeseburger. It's a good. It's a good place. So, is it is it like the Westward Look Wyndham Resort? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's. that's I'm pretty sure that's the one. Dang, that's fire, bro. Yeah, I got a free two night stay for those. Uh, that basketball shooting that I did the halftime on my birthday this year. What, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I got a free two night stay, so it's dope. It's awesome. That's sweet. Yeah. So. What a weekend, dude. My yeah, goodness. it was an awesome. How was your weekend? It was good. We had our church camp down in Patagonia. So I was there from like Friday to Monday night. Um, so went surfing, played ultimate frisbee, volleyball, swimming, had s'mores, campfire songs. It was everything camping that you could think of. We practically did. So it was a good time. It was a good time. It was, you know, oftentimes I don't keep my phone in a RV locked up and never look at the time. So it was like the days felt super long. It was, it was really relaxing. So it was, it was yes. a good weekend for sure. I love that. I love that. So awesome. Well, sweet. Well, I will jump into my stuff to start and then I'll pass it off to you if that's cool with you. Let's run it. All right, sweet. So I'm not going to actually provide an index update for the week. Uh, indexes have been quite a bit rough and rocky. Times have been pretty awful in the market. Uh, and I don't want to depress anybody. So I uh, just want to keep us all head high and riding, riding high as we can. But I really want to dive into sort of politically what's going on. Uh, and I, I'm not speaking from a political lens. I'm just sharing factual information and sort of what tends to happen with that. So uh, for those of you who don't know or haven't been keeping up with the news, uh, there was an attack in Israel uh, by Hamas and in the Gaza Strip specifically, they attacked Israel. And uh, it's it's very unfortunate. There's a lot of gore, a lot of civilian casualties, and the numbers keep uh, dramatically shifting upwards. And of course, coming from that comes, you know, round two of everyone fearful and being fearful that world war three is on the cusp. You know, there's talks about the draft yet again. And we said, we kind of saw this about a year ago when the whole Ukraine and uh, Russia outburst sort of happened. Can you believe that that was February of 2022? So almost 18 months ago, crazy uh, when that war started, but um, just honestly, we're, we're starting to see all of these, you know, is the draft going to come around? What's going on here? What's going on there? But the number one thing that comes along with this is market volatility and market uncertainty. And so I can't stress enough that we are going to see a lot of volatility and honestly, probably a lot of negative movements. We'll probably see a big downward swing, especially because it's also an election year. So not only are we ending a year before an election, that we're honestly typically have some volatility, but we're going into a war and potentially, uh, I think even more certainly in this case than others, you know, the United States has a pretty 
pretty personal relationship with Israel. And uh, there's a higher chance in my opinion. And of course, I'm not a war general have, to, you know, just based on economics and things, we're kind of asserting ourselves a little bit more into this business than we did Ukraine. Yeah, we sent a bunch of money and some guns and stuff, but we're being a little bit more uh, out there when it comes to and asserting our dominance a little bit more when it comes to this war, because it's just a little bit more personal to us, I believe. Um, and so I say all that to say, you know, it, it, we could see war. And typically when we see war, uh, the market doesn't like it because we don't know what's going to happen after. Again, it's just that muddy markets, that muddy fear. And so a good way to capitalize on this, and I, I hate to say capitalizing on war because it sounds insensitive, but it's true. You know, what I'm starting to do personally, not yet for my clients. Um, so this is not financial advice. This is just some things that I am starting to do in myself personally in my own portfolio. Uh, I am starting to shift a little bit of my allocations and assets to cybersecurity, defense, industrials, and material style sectors uh, to take advantage of, you know, the fact that we're probably going to be spending a lot more money defensively on the use of defensive, you know, style missiles and, and you know, just military warfare in general. Um, so again, not financial advice at all. Nothing, uh, you know, that I, I'm saying should be taken wholeheartedly and you shouldn't do, but maybe keep an eye on those specific sectors. And if you have questions and would like to chat a little bit deeper on my sense, please don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, you know, I would love to kind of chat a little bit. I know Kate puts my number and my email in the description below. So just shoot me a text message or an email, uh, just asking for a call. Don't ask me for specific advice. I can't answer, but just say, Hey, can you give me a call when you get a chance? This is blah, blah, blah. I saw you on your YouTube and I'll give you a call and we can sort of chat it out. So that's my update continue on with your investments, especially if your time horizon is substantial, you know, longer than eight to 10 years uh, before retirement, continue putting money away as normal as per usual. But just keep in mind that there might be some areas that you might see more of a return than others. But that's my update for the uh, for the week. So nice, brother. And yeah, I think, you know, something we were mentioning off this call was you know, you use the word capitalize and it does maybe sound a little insensitive. However, you know, there are people at home, right, um, that, you know, we need to invest our money wisely because ultimately that investment can create more jobs and opportunities for people at home and create the infrastructure that we need to fight war, you know, in, you know, other countries. So, you know, do, do you have, you know, thoughts on that, that. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I think you are, you are correct as in, you know, spending money on stocks, you know, increases the valuations of companies, which allows them more access to credit, which could intentionally, or in theory, allow them more access to capital indirectly through the purchase of stock price, you know, but money velocity is a really true big thing and spending money in term in times in which, you know, the government is struggling because they are, you know, spending a ton of money in defensive places uh, can be super beneficial. I mean, look at FDR and what he did during, you know, the, I believe it was World War II, I want to say, where he started creating all of these construction jobs for things that really didn't need to be done, but he was trying to increase the money supply and money velocity here in the States. So he was having people create sidewalks or fix sidewalks, which normally wouldn't be spent, have money spent on. But what it did was it put money in the consumer's checks or in the consumer's checkbook, which allowed them to spend more money in the economy, which increased, you know, money velocity, which allowed in theory, more money to be spent where it needed to be spent. So uh, you are exactly right. I mean, I think f taking advantage and, and putting that could help us in a lot of different ways, not just our lining our own pocketbook. So, yeah, hundred percent. Plus, on top of just you know donating or contributing any efforts or whatever. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, I think it can be a scary thing. Um, you know, just the thought of going to war. Um, you know, especially nowadays, now that all these countries have 
you know, this nuclear access and it's not like we're in the, you know, 1800s with little guns running around, you know, I mean, it's, it's pretty serious, you know. Um, however, you know, to Drew's point, um, the Ukraine ordeal happened over a year ago and look how fast time flies. So if you're looking at this from a long-term perspective, you know, try to make smart financial decisions through it all. Nothing is for certain. Um, so just do what you can. That's really all you can do. And that's what anyone would expect of you. Right. I like um, and I actually want to hit on one piece of that too, as well. A lot of people that are, I was having a conversation with someone earlier this morning and they said, you know, too many decisions are made from an emotional standpoint and you are the biggest detrimental factor to your own, your own portfolio because your behavior is what determines what your returns are, right? So you see a negative return, you're going to sell in, you know, out of fear that you might lose money when in reality, buying more was the right thing to do, you know, buy, buy low, sell high is sort of the concept. Right. But again, you know, being that emotional, it's a little really easy to say, Oh, the world's ending. You know, I see all this thing going on with Hamas. We're going to get into war. We're going to happen. And you know, the nukes are coming and, and humanity as we know, it's gone. Right. But if humanity, as we know, it's gone, then there's no need for you to be saving for retirement anyways. So why are you continuing to save? Don't act as if there's a positive outlook and roll with the punches as they come. Because, of, you know, if, if, if humanity is on the brink, then money doesn't mean anything at all. You're going to be really into resources like how many cattle you have, where, how much food you have. Do you own real estate? Those tangible tile, style assets. So, um, yeah, I do think that, you know, just being cognizant of your emotion and, you know, taking advantage and just sticking to your plan. Super important. But 100%. Yeah. I don't want to take any more time. So Kate, I'm going to pass it over to you. Um, but share with us your updates. And I have some interesting ones. Yeah, absolutely. So to Drew's point, kind of rolling off what his last thought was, uh, there is an update as far as Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, came out, I believe the end of last week, that they at the beginning of November are going to be offering a 5% down conventional loan product and one to four unit primary occupied um, properties will qualify. So um, essentially what this means up until this point, most of your conventional debt products other than FHA and VA, um, you've had to put about 20 to 25% down on any, you know, one to, or really multifamily property that you're going to be using as a, as an investment. So um, now that they're coming out with this 5% down product, I think it's really a um, reaction to the market on Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's part. I have to do more research on it. And I actually have a call with my lender here shortly to go over it further. Um, but my personal thoughts is that it's a reaction to what Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have been seeing in regards to the amount of mortgage applications happening due to higher interest rates. It has been slowing um, as far and along with the fact that prices have just sustained um, throughout the previous couple of years. So, um, you know, I think they might have suspected uh, rates to drop and kind of pricing to drop and everything, but um, everything has consistently increased, including inflation. So the average person doesn't have access to as much capital as I think Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac would like. And so therefore they're creating this program. What it means for you and your clients, if you're a realtor, um, is, is that now your clients can purchase these investment properties. It has to be primary occupied, but they can purchase these investment properties with now 5% down, which is 15% less than what they had to have before. Uh, if they were thinking of doing anything, you know, investment wise. So it is a awesome, awesome news for, you know, fellow real estate investors, um, especially if you're trying to get into your first property um, and you maybe have already utilized your FHA loan or whatever, you know, it's just a great product. So make sure you guys are kind of aware of that speak with your lenders that uh, you have relationships with and just ask them about updates on that specific program. The second thing I want to go over is a Arizona economic briefing and market update supplied by the National Bank of Arizona. Um, I just went over this today. There's a lot of great information in here. Um, and Drew, I did send it to you. 
Um, basically, the gist of all of this market update for the economic um, position of Arizona is that we are really healthy. Um, I want to say in here, and I should have found it before coming on. Um, oh, well, here's one cool stat. Arizona is the third most economically diverse region in the United States. So that's a super strong position. And then there was another stat that said, I think we were like the ninth um, fastest growing state or something like that out of all of the U.S., um, so anyway, really good information as far as Arizona and our economic state, we are really healthy, um, on a macro level. Um, but the one thing I did want to just address is a, um, piece of information I found in there, um, specifically regarding the residential units permitted, um, which is something that they look at. And from April of 2022 to April of 2023, year over year, the residential units permitted in the state of Arizona dropped by 19%, so almost 20%. So one fifth of what it was before dropped as far as the amount of units that were permitted to get built. Um, so what that tells me um, is, you know, I was kind of questioning, well, is that suggesting that Arizona is experiencing a decrease in inventory, which is what that would suggest if they had a 20% decrease in permits that were allowed to for more residential units getting built. So my lender and I were kind of going back and forth um, and uh, his assumption um, was that um, he can only assume this is a correlation of the rise in interest rates as well as inflation and that is causing it to be more expensive to build new homes. Um, so we saw right at the end of 2022 there, beginning of, you know, 2023, we saw that inflation just start to creep and we've been experiencing it ever since. That's when we started to see rate hikes. Um, and because of that, it's just become too expensive for these, uh, not only national builders, but private builders as well became much more expensive for them to build. So now their price to market is substantially higher, right? Uh, and a lot of their projects just don't pencil. It doesn't make sense. And so that's that's kind of an interesting um, piece of information that I saw within that whole report. Everything else seemed to be positive. That was the only one that was not only negative, but pretty substantially negative. And so ultimately what we came um, to a conclusion of um, is that as home building continues to slow, it will increase the cost of living through the supply and demand theory, right? The less supply on the market, and the higher the demand, the more it costs to live. So with less supply, prices will be pushed higher. It won't matter if rates increase because there will always be a necessity to purchase, whether it's investors or buyers that are able to pay cash or just buyers that have a you know very high income paying jobs, low to debt to income ratios, they will be able to buy regardless of where rates go um, because they're always gonna be coming out with some sort of program or something to incentivize people to buy homes, right? So. Again, supply and demand really is what affects the pricing of real estate. And so the fact that home builds or homes that have been able to be permitted to build have gone down substantially over the year over year, um, that tells me that we can potentially be headed for what we have all thought all along, which is essentially just continued uh, low supply. Uh, which means high prices are here to kind of stay regardless of rates. The only thing that we could think of that would potentially bring down, you know, housing uh, pricing would either be a large default rate in mortgages or, you know, a war, which from Drew's report, it sounds like we may be on the cusp of. So if it's a war or large default in rates uh, in mortgages, then, you know, potentially we could see um, you know, some price reductions, but overall, just based on the economy and what it's doing now, we don't really see that happening. So um, based on all that information, what that means for you guys, again, if you're a realtor or you're an end consumer, um, just make sure you're aware of that, that, you know, we are still very much in a low supply. Um, and that 20% decrease we saw year over year ending April 2023, we won't really see the effects of till probably mid 2024, right? So just know that, I mean, there's not a lot of inventory out there and that means sellers have the upper hand. 
So moving forward, if you can find a deal, if you're an investor, or you can find a home that makes financial sense for you, if you're trying to find a primary uh, primary home, pull the trigger on it. I don't really see, you know, again, unless we see a huge increase in defaults and mortgages or we go to war, I don't really see pricing uh, changing a whole lot, even with where rates are at. So I know that's a lot of info, but I hope that all makes sense. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Uh, and I, I think it's, you know, super solid information and and good and bad, but uh, still some pretty awesome opportunities coming ahead down the pipeline with that November Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac uh, loan. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm excited about that one. I, uh, I actually, as we're on the call, I missed a call from my lender, so I'll call him back. But um, yeah, I just think that that's going to be a great product, you know, for absolutely. people, because like I was telling you, Drew, you could buy you could buy a $500,000, you know, multifamily little rental for yourself with 25 grand down, you know, which yeah, maybe a lot of money, but maybe not, you know, it's, it's better than putting down 120 grand, right? Not many people have 120 grand laying around. So the fact that, you know, they're coming out with this product, I think is really going to help that affordability aspect for a lot of buyers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, sweet. Well, I am looking forward to our next meetup here coming up on the 26th of this month. We have Stu Schulman coming in and speaking. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, thank you again, Damian Hubble, for that connection there and allowing him to speak. I've watched his YouTube. He's a great speaker. I think the information he's going to share with us is going to be very impactful and applicable for us as young professionals. Um, so very excited about that. And yeah, so October 26th, it is a Thursday, uh, but remember it's 5.30, 8.30 as, at the Sands Club as usual. Uh, and we will start hopefully the speaker around 6 to 6.15. So if you can get there around 5.30 or 6, that would be fantastic. Uh, but we always like to end on a positive quote. And I know, Cade, you have that prepared for us today. So uh, share with us what that is. Yes, sir. And thank you, Drew, because you actually mentioned this one. So today's quote is Matthew 7, 12. Um, this is actually Jesus talking, and it's kind of known as the golden rule in the Bible. And that is, so whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law of the prophets. Um, so basically just do unto others what you would want them to do to you. And I think, you know, for both you and I, Drew, not only as business professionals, but just people sharing the planet together, That is that is the rule of, of, of God. And ultimately, I mean, even if you don't believe in that, right, it's still a good, good thing to practice. And you will find that if you treat your clients that way, you will probably start doing a whole lot of business. That's it. And I'm sure, That's sure it. you can relate to that. Absolutely. Treat others the way you want to be treated. And, you know, I see it a lot in my industry, but making sure you're making the right conscious decisions. That's truly in the best interest of the client, uh, not in the best interest of yourself, because it's really easy to sell an annuity, but is the annuity the right thing? No, it might make more sense to sell, you know, or open a brokerage account, put that same money. I'm not making nearly as much money, uh, but it's not the best interest of me. It's the best interest of my client. So yeah, treat others the way you want to be treated. I love it. Sweet brother. Well, yeah, we'll just, we'll challenge you guys. Do something today uh, for one of your clients or someone else that you would want um, and see what happens. Love it. I love That's it. Challenge. Sweet. Well, thank you so much for your time, Kate. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you next week and then ultimately on the uh, 26th. Sweet, brother. Sounds good. We'll see you soon. See you soon.